Hey guys, it's Heather from Tomatoes, Poppies, and Everything Gardening. I'm taking a quick break in my car with the air on uh, high, max, recirculating to get that air conditioning on me. Um, the real feel is about 98 today here in Central Virginia, which is better than it's been. I mean, earlier in the week it was just absolutely miserable and I didn't do hardly anything in the gardening. I was still feeling really bad um, on that medication for my infected uh, cellulitis from a bug bite that I had gotten last week. Uh, but now I have completed that antibiotic. I'm starting to feel like myself. And so I'm here at Ivy's today uh, to check on my potatoes, garlic, and um, tomatoes. So I'm going to pause here and show you the clip of the potatoes and the garlic. All right, guys, I just got to Ivy's. I'm checking on everything real quick. I uh, brought a couple things over last time, which is this hardy uh, uh, hibiscus and this gara, both free plants from my own garden. My potatoes are starting to die back. I just gave them about a half a gallon of water each. Um, I got rain twice yesterday, and I don't live that far away, but they did not get rain, so they were really dry. Not quite time to harvest, but soon. It is time to get over here though and get my garlic. Oh, I have it in several different beds. I haven't watered over here yet. You can see everything is dry. Where's all my garlic? <sighs> Maybe it's already died down because I'm not seeing I thought they were in these barrels. Do not see my garlic. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to do some investigation, but let's see. Oh, look at this. My stargazer lilies are blooming. Aren't they beautiful? I'm going to put these in uh, the landscape of our new home whenever we move. I planted these for my friend Kim who died very tragically, very sudden. She was two days older than me, uh, but she died. It's been two years, almost. It's going to be two years this December. This was her favorite flower. I think that might be... Nope, that's not garlic. Hmm. See, the red bee balm is really, really dry. All right, it's time to get busy. And next, we will go check on the tomatoes after I figure out where my garlic disappeared to. I know that I had onions here too, and I see them. These are onions, they're getting ready to have their seeds come out. So I'll probably save those. Um, hmm. Okay. So I found evidence of garlic, which I waited too long. Look at how dry that is. I could dig down in there, but at this point, it would have already. Um, I would imagine thinking it's going to go into its second year. So if that sprouts again, it will produce a bulb and then we can harvest the seeds. Oh, here's some more. I might try to dig that and see what we have, but at this point I would expect the bulb to be really wide and separated. Not sure if it would be the best for keeping. My own situations that were happening, traveling, being ill, the weather, we had like tons of rain, storms and then we had just unbearable heat i didn't get over here in time so my garlic is like disintegrated the foliage above ground i'm sure there are bulbs below ground they have probably at this point separated and they are probably you know i had this happen last year i had missed a garlic and it started to grow again probably about two months later I divided it and I planted it. I think that's what we'll have to do this year because I didn't feel like digging in the heat for those bulbs. I had no idea where they were. 
I know last time I was here I saw a big old wolf spider. And speaking of spiders, I don't know if you noticed, I look kind of weird. Um, I probably always look weird, but a couple days ago in the night during, while I was sleeping, I got bit by a spider somewhere up in here. And like this whole area is like swollen and red and itchy. I've been bit by spiders before on my eye. Um, and it, my eye has swollen shut. This one's not completely swollen shut, but it is puffed. It's itchy. I've got all kinds of bumps that are spreading. They're now kind of coming down this way. I don't feel like going to the doctor. I probably need steroid, but it's not as bad as I've seen it before. Um, there's something about spiders and me that don't get along. Last year I got bit by a, a spider on my foot and it like ulcerated. It was really gross. Something with venom. It was some kind of venomous bite. Anyways, I forgot what I was even gonna tell you. <laughs> Took care of the potatoes, gave water to all of those plants that we just looked at. Um, we'll figure out the garlic situation later. Thankfully, I have a few at home, not a lot. I just may not have a good garlic year, and you know, that happens. Last year, I had a horrible cucumber year. Uh, just have to be grateful for what we can get, you know? You can't control the weather. Sometimes you can't control your circumstances. You just kind of have to roll with it and make the best. So right now I'm going to turn off the electric fence. Oh, there's something trying to get me. A flying thing. A black flying thing. I don't know. It might be a sweat bee. Anyways, we're going to get in there. We're going to go tie up those tomatoes. I uh, have not been over here in over two weeks. And I know things are probably just unbearably... Uh, well, I can see out of the corner of my eye. They look wild. So we're going to go give them what I call my midsummer uh, boost. And I'll put a picture right here. You can see I use Tums. I use black, black, that thing's trying to get me. Blackstrap molasses. And I also put in Bloom uh, from the makers of the Fish Emulsion, uh, Alaska Fish Emulsion. It doesn't have any nitrogen. It's just potassium and phosphorus. And that's what our plants need right now. That heat's coming in, it's unbearable. So I'm gonna chug some water. We're going to take my gallon of that uh, Midsummer Miracle. I mean, I don't know what you want to call it. It's just, you know, we finish a gallon of milk. I don't rinse it. I fill it up with water. I add in about four to six tums. I add in a half teaspoon of uh, blackstrap molasses. And then about a tablespoon-ish of that bloom formula from the Alaskan fish people. And it'll help. So I haven't had really a lot of issues with blossom end rot um, for the last couple of years when I started doing this. I'm not looking forward to going back out there. It's really hot. But we're getting thunderstorms here this afternoon. Uh, hopefully Ivy will also get those uh, rains and thunderstorms. I got a lot of rain yesterday, so I didn't have to water anything today. But she has not had rain. So let's pray for her that she can get that rain and these poor tomatoes uh, can benefit as well. So. Okay guys, that's it. I'm gonna get over there, I'm gonna start working, and then I'm gonna give you a visual, virtual video update. It's not virtual, but you know what I mean. I can't think straight, I'm hot, I'm dehydrated. I should have brought like Gatorade or something, but I didn't. Hopefully my eye will look better in the next video. I just heard thunder, so that's a great sign. I already uh, unplugged the fence. I've had so many uh, experiences as a child getting shocked by electric fences, so I'm always nervous when I cross one. Even if it's unplugged, <laughs> I always think I'm going to get uh, shocked. Anyways, uh, I brought some hornworms from my house. These are small, little babies. I uh, will be on the lookout for more. If I find more, they're going in here. When I'm done uh, tying up the plants, I'm going to take these to her chickens. So let's get inside. Made inside safely which you know it made sense mentally uh, consciously you know that yeah it's unplugged it's not gonna shock me but I think because I did get shocked a lot as a kid trying to shimmy under electric fences I just have that natural fear built into me but look at Ivy's plants over here they are my goodness I bet if I went over there they are eight to ten feet tall they are just monstrous and beautiful. I don't see any ripe fruit yet. She and I both got a really late start this year. 
Um, and plus the weather. I mean, we had really cool weather in the beginning. But these are the Romas. So let me see. Mine are the ones that I grew and planted. Um, these push, uh, push in post. So, oh, this guy don't look too good. That's because I haven't been over here in over two weeks. I haven't tied them up. And I see somebody's been eating. I bet there are hornworms in here too. So I've got my little cup over there. We might have to fill it up. It's best to come at night with a black light. But, you know, you just have to do what you have to do. If I see any, I'm going to pick them off. And this is what I use, guys. I use a needle nose plier. Because... I do not like hornworms. I don't like any kind of really caterpillar that looks like it has eyeballs. So I can't pick them. I have to use tweezers or pliers. I cannot touch them. They scare me. I'm, I'm going to admit it. They scare me. They make a noise. I've had them try to bite me before and fight me. Um, <laughs> so I just do not touch them, especially when they're super thick and big. So these are the Supremo. It's a hybrid. Looks like they're producing pretty good. They are not ready, but they definitely are going to benefit. You hear the thunder? They're going to benefit from me tying them up. They're also going to benefit from getting the midsummer treat that I just told you about. I need to shake that a little bit more. And these last three here are the Ace 55. So they look, they're a different shape. Wow, those look good in there though. So I've got three Ace 55, one, two, three, and then the rest, the 10, this way. Wow, they go all the way down there. I didn't realize I'd be tying up. <laughs> I hope it rains. I hope it rains on me right now because it is hot. Um, you can see I've got blight issues on this. Is that the Ace 55 there? All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that off. We have so much humidity and rain and nasty weather. Um, this is not uncommon. I will just cut those off. They should be fine. Hopefully, I would say, I don't know, what do you think? Two to three weeks or so before I can start harvesting some of these guys. Maybe even a week and a half. I mean, some of these look full size and like they want to blush. But there's some little ones too, so I don't think they're going to be ready all in the same week. It'll probably be like a two to three week picking on these, and then they should be done because they're determinate. All right, guys, I'm going to get busy and talk to you soon. I hope you're having a good gardening week. I hope you're staying away from all the bugs, not getting bitten <laughs> two weeks in a row like me. And I uh, hope your weather is cooperating. And I can feel that cool breeze coming in. I think I'm going to get rained on and that's going to be a beautiful thing. So I'm going to put my phone away and get busy on these. I think that means we're going to have a really cold winter. If you see a woolly mammoth caterpillar, I think they're just called woolly. Um, cold now, winter ahead. Three quarters of the way done. I'm putting them up as best I can. Unfortunately, I didn't plan very well and it was kind of a rush to get these in the ground. I should have got some basic, even if I just went and got the cheapest basic tomato cage, that would have made a difference. Uh, you can see how full these plants are and lush. Um, they've not really been pruned other than the lower leaves that were touching the ground uh, about a month or so ago. And you don't want to prune determinate tomatoes. Just, you know, the lower leaves maybe if they're touching. Um, I have been pulling off quite a few of the blight leaves trying to increase airflow because I don't really expect this plant to grow taller at this point um, it should be about done with its growing phase and we should be finishing up the fruit phase really really soon um, I'd say in the next two to three weeks so all I'm doing right now I'm just trying to support some of these heavy fruits get some off the ground I think I'm going to slow down though. In the beginning here, you can see I was very adamant about getting them completely tied up off the ground. And then I started doing this. I started breaking really big, heavy branches. Um, 
So I'm just doing a looser kind of effect now because it's not going to be long and we can harvest these guys. And once I get done tying these guys up in a loose kind of somewhat structured manner, I'm going to go through, look for any more of the blighty leaves, cut those off, make sure I've got some airflow. Um, there's not much right here you can see because of my aggressive tying up take out some of those leaves don't really need them now um other than for you know basic photosynthesis blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and also to protect the fruit from the sun so i will leave leaves for those purposes but i don't need this many so i'm going to try to take a bit out just a touch especially these uh lower blighty leaves that were on the ground <sighs> goodness so with these guys we're gonna keep them. The shiny ones, they should turn on my counter absolutely no problem whatsoever. The ones that are a matte finish, you know, they never really properly turn for me. That's my experience over the years. And you can see the difference if you compare them. One is shiny, one is just a basic matte finish. So, I am going to keep all of the nice shiny fruits. I'll give, you know, maybe the chickens some of this stuff. But these blighty leaves, I'm just going to go throw into the woods. And I'm still waiting on the rain. It hasn't started yet. It's been thundering. Now the sun's coming out. So I'm like, oh man, come on. I really wanted that rain. But maybe it was just a psych. Thundering, dark clouds. No rain. So, okay. I'm going to get back to it. I just thought that was some information y'all might want to know. And if I don't want to let these ripen on the counter, guess what? Those big fat ones there, we might actually slice up and make some fried green tomatoes. My husband doesn't like them, but I do, and I have a feeling my daughter will love them. So, yep, that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, so I'm about done. Uh, you saw the video of the hornworm, the hornworm poop. I wanted to show you how big it was compared to that little caterpillar. And also, I found uh, towards the farther end of this bed, uh, the last two or three of my Supremos, they really had a lot of cutworms and uh, had a lot of fruit that had worms in them. So I got those ready for the chickens. You saw that a video clip there of that cutworm that I put in with the hornworms. And they are very destructive. Uh, I think some people call them army worms, cutworms. They just like to eat your tomato plants. Now, in the past, in my home garden, uh, usually that's a later thing for me. Uh, horn, hornworms are first. A little bit later in the season, it is the cutworm. Especially if your plants are diseased. They uh, seem to really gravitate, in my experience. Uh, so, you know... It